Welcome back to another thing. I'm Larry Menti. We just talked about cyberbullying, bullies taken to Facebook, to Instagram, and other social media sites to shame, to embarrass, and to ridicule their victims. Now there is a company trying to defeat that kind of bullying at its source with a brand new phone app. Kimberly Kravitz, reporting for another thing, tells us the app was inspired by a recent case that ended in tragedy. Amanda Todd, a victim of cyberbullying, shared her story on YouTube just a month before she took her own life. She narrated her story on YouTube, showing that she resorted to self-harm, drugs, and alcohol use to try to silence the pain she endured as a result of cyberbullying. One man who remains anonymous is responsible for Amanda Todd's suicide. He led Amanda, a vulnerable teenage girl, to believe he cared for her and convinced her to send him a nude photo. Little did Amanda know that he would eventually blast that nude picture out for the public to see. The acts of this one man destroyed a 15-year-old girl, resulting in the decision to take her life. There are no borders. There are no boundaries. And it doesn't matter that, you know, it's not going to be your next door neighbor. It could be someone halfway across the world that's behind the screen. By definition, cyberbullying occurs over the phone and computer, and nearly 43% of teens have been bullied online. One in four will tell you that it's happened more than once. This app has been created to stop the problem before it starts. The very devices used to commit cyberbullying may be the ones to stop it. Todd Schobel is the man behind this app, designed to protect the victims, and it's called the Stop It app. So how do I put uh, a tool in their hands so they self-report? And I felt the best way to do that was go, go to where they live, put it on their cell phone, and give them an app. The Stop It app has been named one of the top five apps to help change the world by CNN and one of the six awesome apps for classroom management by Scholastic Academics. The kids virtually download the mobile application for free. They put in their IntelliCode and they're ready to go. The school cyberbully contact is already populated and ready. They can start using the app in seconds. The idea behind the Stop It app is the deterrent factor, that it will put fear in the minds of the bully because it will increase the likelihood of getting caught. And it's anonymous. So you screen capture that evidence, hit the school cyberbully contact button on the phone, and boom, it goes off to as many administrators that are set up for that district, and they all see it at once in real time. So we have kids who actually want to report things that are going on, but they don't have the way to do it. And it's not only an anonymous feature that they can reach out to a school counselor, but it's the texting and the phone call hotline that's been so important. The Stop It app is now in close to 80 schools throughout the world, including Canada, Australia, Nicaragua, and South Korea. The hope is that this kind of technology can combat the future of cyberbullying. It's a global teaching of awareness that we have to do, but it's like it's so slow, it moves so slow because what people think is it's not going to happen in my backyard, it's not going to happen to my kid. And you know what? I never thought it would happen to mine either, but it did. If you or someone you know is in need of help, call the Kids Helpline, 1-800-668-6868. And for more information on Amanda Todd, log on to www.amandatodlegacy.org. In Somerset County, I'm Kimberly Kravitz. All right, thank you, Kimberly. To continue our conversation now on bullying, we want to bring in Kathleen Hopkins, who is a reporter for the Asbury Park Press and APP.com, who broke just a horrific story about bullying. Can you give us the details? Sure. Um, the story I broke was about a young man named Parker Drake. Uh, he's 19 years old. He's autistic. Uh, he has diabetes. He has Tourette's syndrome and some other disabilities, learning disabilities. Uh, and on February 25th, which was during the winter cold snap, uh, two young men that he knew previously from high school called him up and said, hey, Parker, we'll give you $20 and two packs of cigarettes if you'll go into the ocean and stay in there for a minute. So Parker So this was, was in February, so it was frigid water. It was 30 degrees. The, the ocean temperature Below was 30 freezing, degrees. Yeah, yeah. so uh, apparently um, it was the temperature that if you stayed in for any length of time, you would probably die of hypothermia. And so Parker, being easily swayed, uh, he went along with them. And it wasn't just going into the ocean for a minute. The pair took him 
down the jetty and told him to jump off the jetty, and he did. And he was pretty far out in the ocean, and he was struggling. Could to he swim? He can swim, but he was struggling. It was, he was gasping for air. Um, he says he doesn't know how he made it back. And they videotaped all this, and we can show some of the videotape. We they video videotaped it, yes. And they were cheering and laughing uh, in the background as they're videotaping it. Um, they were saying polar plunge and things like that. They were just laughing. What was the harm to him? Well, for one, uh, he's diabetic and he wears an insulin pump. And while he was in the ocean, the pump froze. Um, so his mother believes he could have died that day. And, and she wanted charges brought against them. She did, The yes. two kids. And what happened? Uh, well, she went to the police and they said they were going to investigate. And then they got back to her and said, um, we're not going to charge them. So there's videotape of this incident, mm -hmm. of them knowing that he was autistic and diabetic, having him jump in, there was harm done to him, he could have died, a and so they have the evidence right there and they couldn't find anything to charge him with? Well, what the prosecutor said was that they couldn't find a crime that fit this behavior. Uh, one of the uh, problems- Reckless endangerment? That's just off the top of my head. Uh, you know, uh, assault? Uh, well, the th problem with assault is that uh, Parker jumped in on his own volition, and he is an adult. If he were under 18, uh, if he were a child, they could have charged these two probably with child endangerment. So the autism doesn't play into his own volition, them saying that he didn't have the mental capacity to make the choice uh, for himself? Apparently not under the law. Um, now, the mother has filed complaints herself charging these two men with uh, endangering the welfare of a mentally incompetent person. Uh, that is only a disorderly person's offense. It's not a crime. Uh, and they're to be in court later this month in April. You met Parker. Yes. Tell, tell me about him. Oh, Parker's a sweet young man. Um, he's just a very sweet, gentle person, and um, nobody deserves this kind of treatment. Uh, I'm sure he just jumped in because he wanted friends. He wanted to be accepted. He... That's exactly what his mother um, says. And um... Thank you so much. Please come back, especially when the legislation goes through. Thank we'd, you. We'd I'll love be to follow I'll the story. I'll be happy to. And Thank maybe you. And talk to Parker and or his mom. We'd love to have them in as well, as they, especially to push for the legislation. Right. I'll, I'll mention that to them. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Kathleen Hopkins, who broke the story, an important story for the Asbury Park Press. When we come back, did you know that your pet may not need all of the vaccinations they get. If you have the right food on board and good digestion, then you're going to have good health.